respect to the Rena, you, you know when we had that uh, Jody Lynn wheel in Gisborne mm -hmm. and, and the guys put the booms out? Yeah. Could that have been a possibility for the booming of the Rena? What they um, what they told us at the meeting in Fakatani was that they have been using booms in some areas, like in the estuaries and that they've been but the problem is the oil has been in the water so long now that it's sinking. Mm. Um, and it, it's actually below the surface. I mean, someone asked a really good question because oil had shown up uh, at White Island uh, near Fakatani. Yeah. And um, they showed an aerial picture of the oil and it was in these, these they called them patties. And someone asked a reasonable question why can't you just scoop them out of the water? You know, I mean, if they've gathered and they're sitting on top of the water, and Maritime New Zealand didn't have an answer, which I actually found extraordinary because I thought that was probably the most simple question. And they just said, oh, well, well, you know, nets have big holes in them. And someone was like, well, you use, you know, muslin or just, even if you get some of it out so it doesn't end up on the shore. Um, but I think their position, uh, from what I could gather, was it's better that it ends up on the shore because then they can clean it up. Now, whether that's better for the environment, I think, uh, was a question that was left begging because this stuff is, I mean, I used to work, I used to work for mobile oil in their, in their technical services laboratory. And the stuff I hated testing the most was heavy fuel oil. We got samples of heavy fuel oil, I just about want to take a sick day. Because it's, it's disgusting, it's thick, it stinks, it, it does make you feel unwell. And then particularly if, you, if you're sensitive to hydrocarbons, um, like if you're somebody who feels sick around petrol, um, then this stuff is really, really nasty and really toxic. And if you get it on you, it, you know about it. It's nasty, nasty stuff. And so to think of a whole lot of it in the water um, and washing up on beaches is not pleasant at all. Hello. Yeah, I would like to know, have they ever had an earthquake around the oil regions anywhere where they've done a study on it? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure they have. I don't know if anyone's done a study on it. Um, because, I mean, I mean that big coomadet um, earthquake that happened, we were on the coomadet line. I mean, if we had oil rigs sitting out in the sea there and the tsunamis, we're going to actually get really affected. Well, I think if you, if you look at, I mean, you only have to look at the history of, of Petrobras to see the kind of environmental catastrophes they've had, um, yeah, where, they, where, they, where they've had uh, storms, and maybe earthquakes, because they've done a lot of work in South America, which is really prone to earthquakes, but it's about making sure that you've got the capacity to deal with it if anything happens, and if you don't have the capacity, then you don't do it. And I think in the past, when you get these huge oil fields, you know, and they might have been in deep water, but they were massive, and companies would probably say it would be worth their while to go in there and do that, because even with the cost of, of all the extras that you need to keep it safe or, or you know, extra protections. I mean, now, because we've reached peak oil, we've only got the stuff that's harder to get at. And, and that's the thing. 50 years ago, they never would have considered looking out there. Absolutely not, because it's so hard to get to. But we've just depleted all of the cheap oil. It's gone. So now we're looking at the hard to get stuff, and hard to get means high risk. And um, if they're not prepared to pay for any accidents that happen and they're not prepared to make sure that every all the equipment's in New Zealand and people are in New Zealand then it shouldn't go ahead.